Hi there. In this presentation, I'd like to discuss the concept of filter Q uh, or Q value of a filter. This was brought up in a previous discussion in relation to loudspeaker alignments where you, where you try to align the loudspeaker response with a known filter function. And in that discussion, the notion of Q was brought up. Uh, so it was brought up, but it wasn't really discussed in a lot of rigorous detail. It was really just an aside, I suppose. So in this presentation, I'd like to discuss a more mathematical, and I use the word geometrical interpretation of filter Q. So hopefully after this presentation, if you didn't understand it before, you'll have some notion for what it means to say uh, filter Q. Let's start with something simple, a second order polynomial, really a, a one parameter family of polynomials where the parameter is theta. It may look a bit strange here. S is just its complex variable. Actually, it's the Laplace transform variable. So it's complex number. And we'll be looking at this polynomial in the complex plane. So the coefficient of x, s squared is one, the constant is one. And the linear coefficient is 2 cos theta. And why, you may ask, why on earth would I define the middle coefficient as 2 cos theta? Well, because if I do, the roots of that polynomial are nicely expressed as minus e to the i theta and minus e to the minus i theta. So right away you see the roots, if I write the polynomial in that way, the roots sit on the unit circle in the complex plane. And more than that, the roots are complex conjugates. So we might say that the roots are symmetric. Now, so this isn't a filter yet. This is just a second order polynomial. Let's look, ah, before I look at the filters, let me just say one more important thing. We can rewrite that instead of using the strange two cos theta notation, let's just write 2 cos theta is 1 over q. So here I've, I've just introduced the q value, which is nothing more than 1 over 2 cos theta. So now you should, I haven't shown you the picture yet, but there's an angle associated with this, this q factor. Now if I use this angular representation, q can range from 1 half, so when cos theta is 1, q is a half, and then as theta goes to pi by 2, Q goes to infinity. That's a large range of Q, but in fact, Q can take on values less than a half, but I'll leave an exploration. Something funny happens with the poles, so I'll, I won't really discuss that here, but you can certainly explore that on your own if you're interested. All right. Now, I've, from that polynomial, I've made a second order high pass filter. You can see that as S goes to zero, the amplitude that function goes to zero as s goes to infinity that function goes to one and so there's some transition from zero to one for this filter now before i mentioned that the roots were e to the i theta and e to the minus i theta so now for this filter the poles are just the locations of those roots and here you see them on the unit circle and it's on one side of the unit circle on the negative the real part of these poles are negative and the negativity means the, the time dependence is damped, but I'll get into that. So again, I'll just restate definition of cos theta is one over two Q. I, in the first presentation, first write up of these slides, I had decided to skip this type of plot that I'm showing to actually plot the magnitude of the transfer function but I guess I decided, or I decided it's useful, so here it is. Uh, to plot the actual magnitude of the filter function, you, in, you let s be i omega and then take the absolute value of the function. And if you do that, you get these curves for q is 1 half, then you double it to 1, double it to 2, double it to 4. And you see by q is 4, the transfer function is awfully peaky. So this same thing happens for higher order functions. So it becomes attractive to associate Q with peakiness, and that's not wrong, but Q is something 
different than the peakiness. For example, I showed you that Q uh, was labeling the location of these poles on the unit circle. Well, now here's the interesting part. If I want to go from second order to a fourth order filter, I can just take the product of two second order filters. But now, and here is, I guess, the essential point of the presentation, if you have two second order filters, you have two values of Q, and these Qs, they have the same definitions of before. The cosine of the angle of that filter is one over two times Q of the filter. But you see for the fourth order filter, there are two Q values and two sets of symmetric poles. Well, I can digress a little bit, I suppose. Not all fourth order filters have all the poles on the same unit circle. For example, whereas the Butterworth filters have, a fourth order Butterworth filter has all four poles on the same unit circle, the fourth order best filter does not. In this case, I just, I just define two different, let's call them filter frequencies, omega-1 and omega-2, and if, if the two filter frequencies aren't equal, then you're just looking at two unit circles, not one. So here's just an example for which omega-1 is not omega-2, and then the poles. <clears throat> two of the poles are on one circle, and two of the poles are on the other. So that's just visually what happens if you're using a fourth-order filter where the two second-order sections don't quite have the same, same filter frequency. But nevertheless, the definitions of Q are the same. We haven't talked about the time dependence, so let's talk now about the time dependence associated with these filters. So what you might do for these systems is look at the impulse response that's associated with that filter or the, or the step response, and for that you have to invert a Laplace transform. <laughs> and you can, I guess you can do that, you know, Symbol not, you can just go online now and symbolically invert. These are simple polynomial filters, so you can just type in the functions. It will do the inverse transform for you, or you can, you know, you can do them by hand. But nevertheless, it's easy, easy for these polynomial filter functions to invert the Laplace transform. If I have a second order filter, you can see explicitly that Q is related to the decay rate of the filter. So in this case, a very large Q will give a slow decay rate. I hope, I hope you can see that. And a very tiny, well, a very small Q. A very small Q means the coefficient in the exponential is large. Uh, and that means uh, fast decay rate. So high Q is a weakly decaying response, which, you know, is usually associated with ringing. But there's also an oscillatory time dependence, which is this capital omega, and that also depends on Q. Well, Maybe then it's no surprise for a fourth order filter, you can also go online and invert, make up a fourth order filter and do the inversion. And you'll see that the time dependence is really that of two damped oscillators that decay at different rates. And here is the essential point. In a fourth order filter, there are two decaying modes and they do not necessarily have the same decay rate. In fact, one may decay much more quickly than the other. But nevertheless, the, the definitions of Q are the same and the, 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 time, the frequency domain and time domain geometry and response of the filters is given by two, not one value of Q. Well, that brings me to the summary. So I'm just putting up the time domain response for the fourth order filter with two Q values. Let me just give a few what I would say are the important physical interpretations of the fourth order filter. Well, in a system described with this fourth order filter, there are two physical modes of oscillation. Two different things are oscillating when you have a fourth order filter, and each of these oscillating things has a different decay rate or a different Q. Now, I showed you a picture of the second order filter and it was it had this peak on it for the higher Q. And certainly higher order filters can also be peaky. And you may want to develop an ad hoc definition of filter peakiness and that's okay, but these are these aren't unique definitions. The the Q or the, the so-called pole Q 
of second order and fourth order filters. That's a rigorous definition and you get one Q for every second order section. All right, well, I, I hope that was helpful. I hope it didn't do more harm than good. Uh, so take care.